Imagine looking at a colorful painting of galaxies, each with its own shape, size, and color. Now imagine that some of these galaxies are actually illusions, created by the gravity of a massive cluster of galaxies that bends the light from the background. And this painting is not just a work of art, but a scientific discovery that reveals the secrets of the early universe. Sounds amazing, right? Well, this is not a fantasy, but a reality. This is the new image of Max 0416, a galaxy cluster that is so massive and so distant that it acts as a natural telescope, magnifying and distorting the images of the galaxies behind it. This image was created by combining infrared observations from NASA's James Webb Space Telescope with visible light data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope. It is one of the most detailed and comprehensive views of a galaxy cluster ever taken. But why is this image so important? And what does it mean? How can we watch it? And what is so special about it? In this video, we will answer these questions and more. We will explain the new image of Max 0416 in detail and what it reveals about the early universe. And we will discuss the implications and significance of this image for our understanding of cosmology and dark matter. So, stay tuned and get ready to be amazed by the wonders of the cosmos. Let's start by describing the new image and its main features. Max 0416 is a galaxy cluster that is located about 4 billion light years away from Earth. It contains hundreds of galaxies that are bound together by gravity. The cluster is so massive that it creates a strong gravitational field that bends the spacetime around it. This means that the light from the galaxies that are behind the cluster, which are even farther away, is also bent and distorted by the cluster's gravity. This effect is called gravitational lensing, and we will explain it more in the next section. The new image shows both the galaxies that are in the cluster and the galaxies that are behind them. The galaxies that are in the cluster are mostly red, yellow, and orange. These colors indicate that they are relatively old and have low star formation rates. The galaxies that are behind the cluster are mostly blue, green, and purple. These colors indicate that they are very young and have high star formation rates. These galaxies are also very faint and very distant. Some of them are as far away as 13 billion light years away. This means that we are seeing them as they were when the universe was only a few billion years old, when the first stars and galaxies were forming. The new image of Max 0416 also contains 14 transient objects, which are sources that brighten and fade over time. These objects are not real, but are multiple images of the same galaxy that are created by the gravitational lensing effect. The cluster's gravity splits the light from the background galaxy into different paths, and each path reaches us at a different time and angle. This creates multiple images of the same galaxy that appear in different positions and with different brightnesses. These images also change over time as the cluster and the background galaxy move relative to each other. This image is part of the Frontier Fields program, which is a collaborative Hubble project that aims to find some of the faintest and youngest galaxies ever detected. The program uses six massive galaxy clusters as natural telescopes to boost the power of Hubble and reveal the hidden treasures of the early universe. They also use the James Webb Space Telescope to observe the infrared light that is emitted by the distant galaxies, which is stretched by the expansion of the universe. By combining the infrared data from Webb with the visible light data from Hubble, the astronomers can create a panchromatic image of the galaxy cluster, which shows the full spectrum of colors and details. Now that we have described the new image's main features, let's first explain the concept of gravitational lensing and how it works. It is a phenomenon that occurs when a massive object, such as a galaxy cluster, bends the space-time around it. This causes the light from the objects that are behind it, such as distant galaxies, to be bent and distorted as well. This effect is similar to how a glass lens bends the light that passes through it, creating a magnified and distorted image of the object behind it. There are different types of gravitational lensing depending on the mass and the alignment of the lensing object and the background object. The most common type is called weak lensing, 
which occurs when the lensing object is not very massive or not very well aligned with the background object. In this case, the light from the background object is slightly bent and distorted, creating a slightly magnified and stretched image of the object. This type of lensing is very subtle and hard to detect, but it can be used to measure the mass and the shape of the lensing object, such as a galaxy cluster. The most spectacular type of gravitational lensing is called strong lensing, which occurs when the lensing object is very massive and very well aligned with the background object. In this case, the light from the background object is strongly bent and distorted, creating multiple images of the object that appear in different positions and with different brightnesses. These images can also form arcs, rings, or crosses, depending on the shape and orientation of the lensing object. It is very rare and very visible, and it can be used to study the properties and evolution of the background object, such as a distant galaxy. The new image of Max 416 shows both weak and strong lensing effects. The cluster's gravity slightly bends and distorts the light from the background galaxies, creating a slightly magnified and stretched image of them. This allows us to see the galaxies that are otherwise too faint and too small to be seen by normal telescopes. The cluster's gravity also strongly bends and distorts the light from some of the background galaxies, creating multiple images of them that appear in different positions and with different brightnesses. These images also change over time as the cluster and the background galaxy move relative to each other. This allows us to measure the distance and the motion of the background galaxy and to study its star formation and evolution. Finally, let's discuss the implications and significance of the new image of Max 0, 416 for our understanding of the early universe. The new image provides a glimpse of the galaxy formation and evolution processes that occurred when the universe was only a few billion years old, when the first stars and galaxies were forming. By observing the colors, the shapes, and the motions of the background galaxies, we can learn about their age, their mass, their composition, and their history. We can also compare them with the galaxies that are in the cluster, which are older and more evolved, and see how they differ and how they relate. It also helps us test the theories of cosmology and dark matter, which are the two main ingredients of the universe. Dark matter is a mysterious substance that makes up most of the mass of the universe, but does not emit or reflect any light. By measuring the mass and the shape of the cluster, we can test the predictions of the cosmological models, such as the Big Bang Theory and the Inflation Theory. By measuring the distribution and the behavior of the dark matter in the cluster, we can test the properties and the nature of the dark matter, such as its interaction and its composition. The image of Max 416 also inspires future observations and discoveries with the James Webb Space Telescope and other instruments. By using the James Webb Space Telescope, we can see the galaxies that are even farther and fainter than the ones we see with Hubble, and we can study their physical and chemical characteristics. We can also use other instruments, such as radio telescopes and gravitational wave detectors, to complement the optical and infrared observations and to reveal more information and phenomena that are hidden from our eyes. We hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new and interesting. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and we will try to answer them. Thank you for watching and see you next time.